You want to know how to count macros for weight loss? Stick around till the end of this video and you'll finally be able to calculate your own portions based on your height, your weight, your age, and your activity level. Hi, welcome back to my channel. So let's get into it. One, what are macros? If you're new to this, macronutrients are nutrients we need in large quantities. They are the proteins, the carbs, and the fats that we need to sustain our body and our energy expenditure. We will count your own portions today using an equation that fits for either women or men, and both will be written in the description below, so don't worry about having to write this down. Just pay attention so you understand the principles behind this and how to adapt it based on your goals and how aggressive or not you want to be with your diet, and if you want to create some, something more sustainable, how to do so. So before I ever understood macros, I had this idea that I needed to know what my perfect macros were and yet I would go online, go on different sites, use different calculators and it would always give me different numbers which was so frustrating because I didn't know I'm like why where are my I need to know what my numbers are and now I understand it's because there's so many different equations you can use to calculate your macros. So just know that today I'm using the Harris Benedict and you will be able to use that equation to continue to manipulate your numbers from now on instead of using a site where you don't know which equation they're using or how to manipulate it. I hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe because there's so much more coming to help you achieve your goals. Now let's get into it. This equation does require your height in centimeters, your weight in kilograms, and your age. Some equations do have body fat level in them, but not everyone has a pair of calipers lying around or the knowledge to use them properly. So to keep it simple, we're gonna use one that uses your height, your weight, and your age, and you also be using your own activity factor, which are also written down in the description below. So you'll be able to read the descriptions and know which activity factor to use to calculate your maintenance calories. So the first thing we need to do is calculate those maintenance calories. How do we do that? We first need to calculate your BMR. And this is where even by just putting your weight and your height in Google, you can easily convert them into kilograms and, or centimeters. And then just plug it into this equation for women or the one for men down below, and it will give you your BMR. I won't get into definitions today, but you do need your BMR to calculate your maintenance calories. Then you'll use your BMR and you will multiply it by the activity factor that I was talking about, and they are listed down below. Just read the descriptions to see which one best fits your lifestyle. They go from 1.2 if you're sedentary to 1.9 if you're extremely active, and then that will give you your maintenance calories. So it's simple, you calculate your BMR and you multiply it by your activity factor. That gives you your maintenance calories. To lose weight, you need to be in a deficit. So you need to take away from that maintenance caloric budget in order to lose weight. Now this is where those equations were giving me so many different numbers in the past because you can be more aggressive with your diet or less aggressive. So it just depends. A good starting point for most people who have been overeating and not dieting and have a very healthy metabolism is to take away 500 calories because 500 calories per day times seven days per week equates to 3,500 calories, which equates to about one pound of weight loss per week, which is sustainable long-term. So in this case, I had calculated maintenance calories well above 2000 and I took away 500 calories per day, which gave me the budget that I was talking about in video one, where I showed you the six meals associated with this, as well as those macros. Now today I'm showing you how to count those macros, how I got to those numbers. The first thing you wanna do is secure the protein because one, protein makes you feel fuller longer. Two, it has a thermogenic effect. So it requires more calories to burn those calories. So it's a win-win situation. As well as when we age, we require more protein and most people are under eating proteins. You wanna first secure the protein. And how you do that is by multiplying your weight in kilograms by a range of protein, which can go from 1.8 to 2.8. 
Just depends how much protein you want to be eating or how little protein, but you can manipulate it and change it at any time within your budget. So in this example, I used 2.4 because I was also going into prep. I wanted to maximize that thermogenic effect, feel fuller longer, and make sure that I was having enough protein to build that lean muscle. So I did my weight in kilograms times 2.4, which gave me 137 grams. I rounded down here to 135 just to make it easier. When you use your weight, in order to multiply it by the range of protein. If you're overweight, you don't necessarily want to use that weight to multiply by the range of protein because you'll be eating way too much protein. So what you want to do is support your lean muscle mass. So when I was starting prep, I used 125 pounds because I knew that would be a, a lean mass for me. So I did 125 times 2.4, which is where the 137 came from. You have your maintenance calories, you've created a deficit, you secure the protein by calculating how many grams of protein you should be eating. Then you need to take away those calories from the caloric budget you've calculated. Now you can see here, protein has four calories per gram. So you do 135 times four, 540 calories. In this case, it's really easy because you just subtract that from the total. There's 1000 calories left to divide between carbs and fat. How you proceed is entirely up to you. A lot of people think one diet is better than the other. It really is based on preference and what's gonna be sustainable for you long-term. You don't need to go keto and cut out carbs. You don't need to go extremely low fat and just eat carbs. You wanna find a good balance that best supports your health as well. So for me, I wanna make sure that I'm eating a minimum of 40 grams of healthy fat per day because I do wanna eat the rest in carbs. I prefer carbs, I feel good on carbs. It, fuels me pre and post workout and that's how I feel my best and it's also so important for your brain to function properly. So I don't do low carb. You could do that by just calculating more fat into your diet and then the rest would be carbs. But I want to make sure I'm eating enough healthy fats for my health but I also want to maximize how many carbs I'm eating. So I secure a minimum of 40 grams of healthy fats and then I multiply it by nine because fats have nine calories per gram and that's where the 360 calories is coming from. So now I can take away from my budget, my protein calories, my fat calories, and the balance is 640 calories. And in this case, you can do the opposite to calculate the grams is divided by four because carbs are four calories per gram and that gives me my 160 grams of carbs. So that's where the breakdown is coming from in video one where you saw the six meals associated with this, which for you could be four meals, five meals, six meals. That doesn't matter as long as you're hitting your targets. Also, you wanna make sure you're hitting your fiber target. You don't calculate your fiber target because there's a recommendation that is the same for everyone and I will write them down below according to how old you are and what sex you are, how many grams of fiber you should be eating per day. In my case, I need to make sure I'm eating a minimum of 25 grams of fiber in order to have proper digestion, also the health benefits that come with fiber and protein and fiber have that thermogenic effect. So they're both great when you are trying to lose weight because they require more energy to be burned and they keep you fuller longer. What do you do once you've calculated your breakdown? You can start tracking your macros. If you're part of our team, you know that you have access to an amazing app where you can easily plug in your nutrition system, your snacks, your meals, and it will be calculating the grams for your day. If you're not part of our team and you don't have access to that app, you can use my fitness pal. It's a free app. You will have to input your numbers when you sign up for the free app. It will give you macros. Again, because there's so many calculators out there, it may not be the same numbers that you just calculated. So if you're wanting to follow something you can control and manipulate, just use the column where it's telling you what you've put in so far for the day and not necessarily what it's recommending or what you have left over for the day. 
or you can pay an annual fee to upgrade this app and then put in your exact numbers and go from there. There are certain situations where this will not work. For example, if you've been yo-yo dieting and your metabolism has crashed, this won't work because you're going to be calculating way more calories than what your metabolism can currently handle. If you find yourself in a situation where you're in an extreme, you have been severely restricting, then what you want to do instead is track what you've been eating every single day accurately for one week, two weeks, in order to determine what is your maintenance calories based on what you're actually eating. Because otherwise you may use this equation and calculate something way higher that is just going to make you gain weight because your metabolism is not up to par. Just know that if you are part of my fit tribe, I can help you adapt your macros and then also manipulate them so that you can go up and down you can come back to maintenance if you want a diet break you can have a surplus in order to boost your metabolism so there is more to this but at least now you know how to calculate your own portions and then from there you can start manipulating either by adding a little bit if you're responding well tracking how you feel how you're sleeping your measurements your weight and then track over time see how you're doing and then if you're responding well you can adjust up and add food so you'll still be in a deficit just less aggressive which is also motivating when from week to week you're having great results and you add food and you keep having results up until a certain point where you may plateau. Now give it some time to see if it's an actual plateau or if you're not tracking properly and then adjust accordingly. You do want to keep in mind that you have to also track your exercise. You want your exercise to be a constant because if you're playing with your nutrition, you need to be in control of as many parts of the equation as possible. And if you calculate it, a certain activity factor you want to make sure that you are keeping up with that activity factor and if you manipulate it or change it then make sure to recalculate and recalibrate and track to see how you're responding i hope this video was helpful please give it a thumbs up if you learned something comment down below if you have any questions and i will try to address them in future videos or respond to you right away and i hope that you subscribe and stick around for more because we're going to be diving into these topics more we're going to talk about our nutrition system and how it makes it so much easier to use this without obsessing over it when you have some great meals coming right to your doorstep that help you achieve your either your weight loss goals or your energy goals or your healthy aging goals it just makes it so much easier but the one thing that you can use this for is to learn your food because you might realize you're really short on protein based on the goals that you're trying to achieve you might realize that you reach for carbs all day long, which is why you're so hungry because you're not benefiting from the thermogenic effect of protein and fiber. So it will help you learn your food, which is the ultimate goal. It's not to count macros forever. You don't have to do this forever, but it's certainly helpful to help you create your own meal plan and at the same time to eat what you want to eat, which is how I stepped on stage at 38 years old as a mom of two toddlers feeling and looking my best is because i needed to find something that was going to work for me and this was so helpful if you want to see a breakdown of the six meals associated with this please refer back to my first video that will give you an example but don't feel that it has to be your meal plan you can make the foods that you like to eat fit the macros that you're going to calculate